today on What's Next. If you have a dream, that you have the responsibility to yourself to see that dream and make the first step. I wake up every, every morning and say, God, thank you for giving me another day. In knowing who I am, if I can help someone else find that voice, that is, that's everything. Hello and welcome back to What's Next, the show with an appetite for making a difference, pun intended. I'm Mark Middleton and today's show might seem at first glance to be all about food, but what we're really talking about is taking a chance to discover what's next, about leaning into our creativity and trying to find a way forward, about working with others to make a difference in our community. So let's get with it. I give you once again our band of creative self-expressionists, Amy Sweezy, Cecily Wilson, and Bill Schaefer. And Bill, I know you've been in several rock bands over the years. What do you think about being in a band of creative self-expressionists? Pretty cool. Creative self oh, oh it would break up like every other band ever has. You can't coexist, it's so hard with so many great, but before they break up, it's the most inspiring environment they've ever been in. Do you, do you kind of see the dichotomy there? I mean, it's almost like if you ever thought about trying something, but then you stop because all you can think of are a million reasons that it probably won't work, you'll like this story. Jen Ross had a dream, hers was to open a vegan restaurant in an economically disadvantaged area. Everybody she asked, she sought everybody's opinion out. They all told her, bad idea. Oh, did I mention on top of that she has zero restaurant experience at all? But here's what can happen when you step up and believe in yourself. Okay. Jen Ross is on a mission to nourish a community. Not just their bodies, but also their souls. She started by doing what everyone told her she could not. In a less than affluent neighborhood, she opened a vegan restaurant. Her challenge? Let's make this approachable for everyone. Let's show everyone that you can be vegan if you want to. Let's show them that you don't have to spend five million dollars and your left arm to afford a vegan meal. And being able to come into the town of Edenville, which is the oldest all black incorporated municipality in the United States, and continue that is a continuation of my mission. You'd think that only an experienced restaurateur would have the nerve to take that kind of a risk, right? Well, would you believe she's never done this before? And most of the people she consulted were not exactly encouraging. What is wrong with you? I've had those conversations so many times, like, what on earth is wrong with you? But I feel that you don't have to have a blueprint um, necessarily of everything mapped out. This is what I'm going to do, then I'm going to take this step, and then I'm going to take the next step. I feel that if you have a dream, that you have the responsibility to yourself to see that dream and make the first step. So she took that step, along with most of her savings and all of her courage, and now her vegan restaurant is open for business. So my friends would say to me, Jen, oh my gosh, you're so fearless, and I'd go, I'm not fearless at all. I feel the fear every day. I feel the fear several times a day, maybe several times an hour. It's just, no, I recognize it for what it is and say, so, oh, so that's what excitement feels like. You know what I mean? And work past that fear. I think that comes with age. And do you know what I was most impressed with about her is she took the thing that can be so paralyzing for the rest of us, she removed the fear, or, or at least she found a way not to let the fear stop her from trying. Amazing attitude, and, and not just at that, something else that she said about our dreams. If you have one, you have a responsibility to at least take the first step towards making it a reality. What do you guys think of that? And, and what do you think, as we get older, it seems like we're more willing to take risks or are we less willing? How about you, Amy? What did you think about that? Personally, yes, I do feel like as I get older, I am more apt to take a risk. I think because you start thinking, you know, I don't have as much time now on this side as I did on that side. So if I'm going to take a risk, it's now or never. 
You are looking at a group of risk takers, folks, but, but I got to tell you guys, I honestly struggle with this one because some of our dreams are crazy and we live in a world of chase your dream, chase your dream. We encourage people to chase their dreams, but you know, I say, and I think this is what Bill said, let it percolate for at least a little while, maybe take one step, because I think the desire to do something that we're really meant to do just won't go away. So are we willing to take more risk as we get older? Now, I think it depends on the kind of risk. Are we willing to risk embarrassment? Certainly, we should be. Are we willing to risk our health or injury? Absolutely not. And will we risk our financial security? Probably not. I think I'd have to agree with you, but I will say that when you've taken risk in the past, you now have equity. And so you can use that equity to put forth to your dream of making it re a reality. So I would probably go ahead and do that because I'm just that kind of girl. I'm going to take a risk and just see what happens. Um, and I will say I've been singing the praises of Jen. I love that food, the restaurant. I've been going there for years. And when I taste, taste the oxtails that are really not oxtails, I think that's it's much mushrooms or something they're so amazingly good so yeah take that risk and I'm glad that she did you know if you buy honey from from anybody you want to buy raw honey Welcome back to What's Next. Of course, discovering a what's next after we retire can be especially challenging, but it is more important than ever. Finding something we like doing that gives us purpose, finding something that we like doing that provides income really is the holy grail because we are living longer than most of us thought we would, and uh, most of us haven't saved enough to fund those extra years in the style that we would like. So I guess the question is, what do we do? Well, Scott Irving provides a pretty good example that we think is especially buzzworthy. When Scott Irving retired, his wife strongly suggested that he get a hobby. I was still working and he was hanging around and I said, you've got to have something to do. And housework wasn't an option <laughs> or cooking. Beekeeping immediately came to mind. Scott got a couple of hives and then, perhaps, divine intervention. I heard about a preacher that wanted to get rid of some hives, and so I bought his hives. Soon, the honey was flowing and the hobby was growing. And then I had a friend of mine that was in the, the villages, and I says, uh, do you think there'd be a spot here to sell honey? He says, you know, Scott, I'm glad you called. We're going to start a farmer's market. And from there, it just busted loose. Scott's bottling operation moved from the kitchen sink to a barn on his farm and finally into a commercial kitchen. His hobby had become a business, Riverview Apiaries. And to keep up with the growing demand, he teamed up with Billy and Lisa Fussell, a husband and wife team who owned Bee Fussy Apiary. I talked to other beekeepers and, you know, their wives, oh yeah, my husband's a beekeeper, I have nothing to do with it. It's nice to have, you know, a partner that wants to do the same thing you want to do. Together, Scott and the Fussels are running nearly 500 hives with as many as 50,000 bees per hive. And they don't just sit in a field at Scott's farm. Billy and Lisa move the hives all over the southeast and occasionally as far away as California where they work with farmers to pollinate their crops. You wouldn't have apples, most of your fruits. How about all your vegetables that we eat, you know? You wouldn't hardly have any of those. Honeybees pollinate 80% of all U.S. grown crops, including a third of the food that we eat every day. Despite their importance, bees are disappearing at an alarming rate. Loss of habitat, toxic pesticides, and global warming have reduced the overall U.S. bee population by as much as 70% in recent years. Beekeepers like Scott and the Fussels are more important than ever. They're raising healthy bees and keeping them off crops with dangerous pesticides. And they're bottling raw honey, which has been found to help prevent cancer, heart disease, gastrointestinal disorders, diabetes, and more. And because honey contains pollen, local honey has been found to provide relief from seasonal allergies. We've gotten people off Clarendon, Zyrtec, and Flonase, but it's got to be local. It's got to be the local honey. The bees are bringing in the same pollen that's bothering you. In other words, you're just building up your immune systems, what you're doing, but it works. It's got to be local, and according to Scott, it has to be raw. You know, you get bottles that says pure honey. Well, everybody's got pure honey. You want raw honey. In other words, ones that hasn't been heated, 
you know, filtered and all that stuff. No. At 75, Scott Irving is spending less time in the field and more time marketing a product he's proud of. The Fussels are doing most of the heavy lifting, along with the third generation in this beekeeping enterprise, Scott's nephew Jake. Scott is an incredible human being. The fact that he's still out here is really a tribute to his character. So at 75 years old, how's life? Uh, are you enjoying it? Is it good? It's good. It's really good. Yeah. I wake up every, every morning and say, God, thank you for giving me another day. It's a hobby that's grown into a full-blown mission-driven business. And folks, bees don't just pollinate the food that we eat. They also pollinate wild plants that provide food to insects and bees and animals. They are a critical part of biodiversity and our entire ecosystem. And, you know, everyone we interview for that story marveled at how hard bees work and how much we can learn from them. And, you know, I'm not buying all of that. I do like the fact that they are all in it for one another. But from the moment that they're born, bees have a job and they work constantly their entire life, which lasts a total of about four to six weeks. They actually wear their wings out and work themselves to death. So uh, how about you guys? Uh, are you wearing your wings out, Bill? Me? I, I, don't know. I don't know if I'm wearing my wings out, but you've seen me limping around Growing Boulder headquarters pretty often. <laughs> oh, yeah, the knees don't work like they used to, but I'm telling you, I got plenty of gas in the tank for whatever, for what's next. How about that? Uh, hey, 100%, I agree with you, yes. Fly, butterfly, fly. <laughs> I'm using that opportunity to just spread my wings and fly. You know, I felt for a long time like I was wearing my wings out in my career, and that's why I needed to step back and take a break. It was time, you know, to just maybe protect my wings a little bit better and do something that was more enjoyable to me and less stressful. I don't see aging as this thing that doesn't make you stronger and better. Welcome back to What's Next. Our next story, Trenna Gregory Probst. She worked for more than two decades in the spa industry and baking was just her hobby kind of on the side. But then she decided it was now or never. So what she found was that a later in life perspective made all the difference. How did I get into baking? Well, it was never my intention. I went back to school at 42, graduated at 45, and started a whole new career. When I was in culinary school, bacon and pastry, these kids, and I can say that because they were, they were kids compared to me. I'm at 42, 43, 44, graduated at 45. They're half my age. They have 20 years to make a name for themselves. I'm here at 45. I need to hit the ground running. In fact, I should have been sprinting like a year back. I feel a little more stable in not sweating a small stuff anymore. If that's a thing, you're like, eh, rub some dirt on it. You know, I, I think that has helped me stay calm in situations when I thought, wow, what now, now what? What am I gonna do now? And this is what 52 looks like. I don't see aging as this thing that doesn't make you stronger and better. I think allowing yourself to be present and still forgive yourself when you've made a mistake or you can learn from that and move on, having years behind you gives you kind of that wisdom to go, ah, it'll be all right, tomorrow's another day, yay. <laughs> I came out at 23 and I can't imagine not living authentically who I am until I had done an interview and he said, what you don't see is that by you living authentically who you are, you have been on national television on a really well-known show with what is considered to be straight media, talking about your wife and your family, and you never have hidden in any way, shape or form. Maybe that is what your lesson or your journey is by authentically being who you are. At now 52, it's almost 30 years I've been out. I don't know any different. I felt that 
at 23 where I felt like I had to hide. If someone feels like they can't stand up for themselves or they're not in a safe place and they need help, protection, guidance, a way to find the help that they need, then by all means, I can do that too. My strength, I guess, in knowing who I am, if I can help someone else find that voice, that is, that's everything. Trenna and her wife run the successful Seven Bites restaurant in Orlando, and they've been featured on diners, drive-ins, and dives. Now, Trenna says that age gives her the wisdom and perspective to navigate challenges in life and to find her voice. So I'm wondering, has this been true for you? Cecily, we'll start with you. Has age given you perspective and wisdom? Oh, completely. You know, you're, it's like a fine wine. You get better with as you age. And I absolutely know that the younger Cecily is nothing like the 5.6 Cecily right now. <laughs> she is the best right now. And I love being where I am at this point in my life. Yeah, I don't know. I, I knew the younger Cecily, and she was pretty cool too. This one's <laughs> just just as good. And maybe maybe that's kind of where my thought was going, Cecily, is that um, what they say: if you lose one of your senses, like your hearing or your eyesight, the other senses get stronger to compensate. Maybe if our bodies physically are are, are diminishing a little bit, maybe there are other parts of us as we age that just get stronger. Because I feel I feel more wisdom. I feel smarter. I feel braver. I feel less encumbered by what other people think, this is a great time to be alive, Mark. It really is. I agree, Bill. Uh, I also think version 5.6 of, of Cecily is pretty darn good, but the real upgrade <laughs> was when you went from 4.7 to 4.8, Cecily. I'll never forget that one. That was phenomenal. And, uh, you know, we talk a lot about resilience. Uh, Jen said it in our earlier story, and, and to me, that's what age gives us. The bad news is we've all been knocked down a time or two. The good news is we now know how to get back up. And I love how Trenna says, just rub a little dirt on it. Uh, there's great wisdom in that. Don't sweat it, just move on. Time now for your take. Uh, we recently asked some of our followers on social media, what is your favorite thing about your current age? Mary Elizabeth Phillips is almost 70 and she says, She's finally free to be who I was created to be and to do things that most truly express who I am. Uh, Drew Van Cleef says, much more inner peace, gratitude, self-acceptance, as well as retirement income and Medicare. Who doesn't love that? Uh, Gaylene Middleton, uh, no relation, says senior discounts. Full disclosure, <laughs> I struggle with those, uh, but that may be a topic for another time, you guys. So. Uh, what is it for you guys? What's your favorite thing about your current age? Seth, start us off again. Well, I think that the best thing about me now is that I've been able to accept Cecily as she is with my short hair, with my saggy boobs. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like, it's just life. I mean, everything changes, but I'm still beautiful and I feel confident in who I am. So that's who I love. Sorry, <laughs> TMI. <laughs> All right, I'm Bill with the no hair and the bulging belly, but what I like the most uh, about this age are, are all of the lifelong friendships that, I don't know, I think maybe it's social media allows you to reconnect. I mean, I hear from so many friends one-on-one, -on -one, you know, one-on-one -on -one from college, from, from, from high school, from elementary school, and I love that. I, I mean, it makes life feel like that perfect worn out pair of jeans that you just love putting on. <laughs> You're still wearing those jeans? <laughs> Sorry, that's why we're framed from the waist up. <laughs> I love being at an age where I don't have to sweat the small stuff anymore. And I know that's so cliche, but when I was younger, you know, everything was, oh, what about this and what about that? And you second guess everything and worry about things. And now I'm at an age, the big 5-0 uh, that I just crossed over, um, that I don't have to worry about the small stuff. I also love living in an era where I know I'm only halfway there. When my parents were 50, they didn't have that possibility as much, or my grandparents maybe, of that they were going to live to 100. And now it's so much more common that we make it to 90 and 100. So I still have a lot of life left to live. 
Amen to that, sister. You know, we've all heard, heard this from our elders for years, that you really don't feel any different on the inside. Uh, and you know, it's true. To some extent, you're still a kid. And what I like about my current age and what I'm really grateful for uh, is that I also, at least for now, really don't feel any different on the outside. Uh, I certainly look different, uh, but I'm able to do almost anything that I want to do, and that really is a great feeling to have at 70 years old. And, you know, I guess that kind of brings us back to where we begin today. The moral of today's stories, opening ourselves up to the never-ending possibilities that continue to surround us all, really at any age, taking a chance to discover what's next. That's something we should all be doing. So. Uh, Think about that and we'll see you right back here next time.